In today's hectic, busy, on-the-go world, you should always remember to take the time to slow down, take a breath, and really appreciate the world around you. Can you hurry up? We've only got this studio book for 45 more minutes. Okay, well, as is the case in our studio, so too is the case in video games. With many games showing a lack of patience with your lackadaisical attitude, the manifests in them punishing you for going slow, through methods like dispatching unkillable enemies to chase you onwards, physically moving you to where you need to be, and straight up having your character piece out of the game. We've covered this topic before, and the comments of that video were full of further suggestions for weird ways that games punished you for taking the time to explore and enjoy them. So here are seven of our favourite suggestions. Enjoy, and beware minor spoilers ahead for the following games. Uh, this is all going a bit too slowly. Can you speed this thing up, please? Well, now it's too fast to read. You've got to... Can we wind it back and then go forward again so people can actually read the games that are in it? It's going to take longer now, isn't it? Because now it's going... Yeah, but it's fine. They could have just... I mean, they could slow what was that? Themselves. What was that fifth one? I didn't even read it. It wasn't important. It's a rubbish game anyway. Oh, okay. I have something. Oh, Let's go. They say death comes for us all eventually, which is true, but it's especially true in the Persona games, where death will literally come for you if you spend too long exploring a dungeon. Known in the game as the Reaper, there's no mistaking who this guy is, although he appears to have swapped the trademark scythe for a couple of guns? That's somehow worse. Anyway, the Reaper exists to ensure that you don't dawdle. To use Persona 5 as an example, if your party hangs around on a floor of the randomly generated dungeon known as Mementos for longer than two minutes, the Reaper will spawn into the area, announcing himself with a rattling of chains and a red ripple effect to let you know things are about to get eerie. Something's fishy here. Let's be careful. From this point onward, the Reaper will then relentlessly chase down the party, moving through the level, phasing through doors, and generally acting like a floaty Terminator until you either get a move on and move on to another floor, or he catches up to you, at which point you should get ready for one of the hardest fights in the game, because the Reaper is one tough customer, as you'd expect from the physical representation of death itself. He's strong and hits hard, but is also an absolute tank, with huge defence and immunity to instant kill attacks. I mean, who would turn up to reap him? Exactly. Oh, he is fond of an instant kill attack himself though, so watch out for that. Or maybe just pick up the pace next time. Just a thought. The most menacing adversary you'll face in a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon from the long-running Pokemon spin-off series Pokemon Mystery Dungeon isn't an angry Gengar or even a violent Kecleon shopkeeper after you've tried to do a runner with its precious merchandise. No, the most menace it is possible to experience in the ever-shifting dungeons of PMD arises when you and your party of friendly mons have been progressing too leisurely through a dungeon floor and you're given a warning that is unusually cryptic. Well, you might have thought, that was unusually cryptic. I sure hope to avoid whatever that something is, and yet still you linger on in the same dungeon floor. Maybe because you're farming for EXP, or maybe because deep in your psyche your Freudian death drive urges you towards self-destruction. Either way, brace for another sinister warning. Hmm, sinister. But you're still no wiser to the source of impending doom even after a third and final warning that tells you it's getting closer. If after that you still haven't fled the floor, it's time to face the terrible consequences of your dawdling, which is a strong wind blowing you clean out of the dungeon. The unseen force that ejected your slow-moving Pokémon butt right out of the Mystery Dungeon is apparently some form of sentient wind that's pissed at you for taking too long. To which I say it's a dungeon crawl, not a dungeon sprint, bloody wind. At any rate, being stalked by a powerful malevolent wind is your punishment for transgressing. Much like Mark Wahlberg in The Happening, if he were a Pokémon. 
I know that's not what that movie was about. It was aliens, right? Sending vicious monsters after you or blowing up the level if you take too long is all very well and good, but there's one thing that's guaranteed to get me moving when I'm running out of time, and that's the music getting all stressful. It happens in loads of games. An audio cue that says you need to hurry the F up, signified by the music speeding up to match the BPM of your suddenly spiking heart rate. Sometimes it's announced with a stressful fanfare. Sometimes it's a completely different, much more horrible bit of music. One thing they all have in common, though, is that you're going to get a move on, if only because it means you'll get to stop listening to that stressful music sooner. Interestingly, it's the other way around in Spelunky, with the music actually slowing down when you only have 30 seconds left on the timer. But then the unkillable ghost appears to murder you, so it is still pretty stressful, I guess. That looks like the city zoo's rear gate. If a rescue team's on the way, I'd better hurry. I have kind of a bad feeling about this, but it looks like I should check it out. Have you ever been playing a Resident Evil game and wondered to yourself, how come none of these characters are getting infected with the zombie virus? After all, they're constantly getting bitten by infected zombies, or having infected stuff dripped onto them, or wading around in virus-infected sewers. Oh my god, this is getting worse. Are they just knocking back the echinacea and vitamin C every time they save, or what? Well, it turns out there is a Resident Evil game that included a T-virus infection mechanic as a method of getting players to hurry it up, and bad news, friends, it was bad. Released for the PlayStation 2 in 2004, Resident Evil Outbreak and its expansion sequel Outbreak File 2 were the first Resident Evil games to introduce co-op. Yeah. Set during the Raccoon City outbreak seen in Resident Evil 2 and 3, the outbreak games follow a group of survivors in different scenarios throughout the city, including a hospital, a burning hotel, and a zoo full of zombie animals, including a goddamn zombie elephant, the ultimate weapon. The game was also unique in that the characters were all regular Joes. A journalist, a student, a security guard, a plumber, even a star's reject. Yes! The one thing they all had in common, however, was that they were all just riddled with the T-virus. Each player character in Resident Evil Outbreak has a virus gauge, showing how infected they are. Each character has their own rate of infection, and you can stave it off with sprays and herbs. There's that echinacea! But your viral load is constantly ticking up as you play, and if you get injured, it ticks up at an even faster rate. <laughs> Regardless of who you're playing as, if that gauge hits 100%, it's game over, which means no dawdling. <sighs> I don't care if you want to look at interesting things, or explore, or try and befriend the zombie elephant. If you enjoy taking it slow, you better also enjoy dying of the T-virus, because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Feed me to the elephant. It's what I would have wanted. My pulse is beating like a drum, but my blood is running cold. I'm not sure what's going on, but I came here with a question. And I'm gonna find the answer if it kills me. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a roguelike dungeon crawler in which every level is set to a song, and you have to do everything in time with the background music. Which is either a brilliant gameplay innovation or a stupid idea that no one could like, depending on if you have a sense of timing or not. The jury is still out. The way you progress through levels in Crypt of the Necro Dancer is by exploring until you find and defeat the level's mini-boss, at which point the exit stairs become unlocked. Find the stairs and you descend further into the crypt and on to the next level. There is, however, another way of moving on to the next level, although it's not likely one you want to take. 
If you take your time, maybe by exploring, maybe by sitting still and listening to the admittedly killer soundtrack, the song accompanying the level you're on will eventually end. Regardless of what you've done up until this point, a trapdoor will open underneath your character and dump you unceremoniously into the floor below and the next level. If you haven't defeated the level's mini-boss, however, the trapdoor drops you into a small, locked room with the boss that you didn't defeat, along with a few other enemies for good measure. Now you have to do the whole fight on the back foot in a cramped space with little room to manoeuvre to teach you a valuable lesson about timing. Uh, I think we established earlier I have no sense of timing. This seems unfair. Video games could be about literally anything in the 1980s. A ravenous circle that eats ghosts? Sure. Ape kidnappings on a construction site? Why not? A dinosaur trying to rescue his girlfriend by imprisoning enemies inside bubbles and then popping them? What you talking about, Willis? Am I right? That last one is the premise for the 1986 arcade game Bubble Bobble, in which you play as Bub, the aforementioned dragon slash dino, who puts people in bubbles, pops the bubbles, and then eats the fruit that comes out. A normal thing for a game to be about. Once you've done this to all the enemies on a level, you move on to the next one, but take too long to clear the level of bad guys, and you're going to regret it. That's because, while Bubble Bobble doesn't have a traditional time limit, it does have a penalty for taking too long. First up, you'll get an alert from the game telling you to hurry up. Then, the remaining enemies will get faster and more aggressive, before finally announcing himself with a sinister fanfare comes the creature Skell Monster, a skeletal whale with glowing red eyes who shows up to punish slowpokes. He also goes by the name Baron Von Blubber. Me, personally, I'd stick with Skell Monster. Von Blubber is indestructible, can phase through solid matter, and exists solely to murder you, so once he's in play, you'd better finish the level and fast, because he can kill you with a single hit, and gets faster the longer he's around, making it a question of when, not if, he finally catches up to you. Of course you'd never get something this weird in a game these days. Oh no, here he is in Bubble Bobble 4 Friends on the Switch, which came out in 2019. Much worse. Get up. I'll allow you to die like a warrior. Father. Shenmue is hardly a game that you'd describe as moving at a breakneck pace. As far as I can remember, I spent a good 75% of my time in that game purchasing capsule toys. This is cool. Shenmue did feature an in-game clock, however, with certain activities only being available at certain times, and each time you went to sleep, the game's calendar would advance by one day. What you're supposed to be doing is searching for Lan Di, the mysterious ponytailed man who murdered the father of your character, Ryo Hazuki. However, it's very easy to imagine a scenario in which you don't do that at all, but instead spend all your time playing arcade games, asking people about sailors, and taking a job as a forklift driver to fund your crippling capsule toy addiction. It might seem like you can take all the time you like, but there is actually a very strict time limit in Shenmue, and that time limit is just under 20 weeks. Shenmue begins on November 29th, 1986. If you take too long to track down Lan Di and the in-game clock rolls around to April the 15th, 1987, Lan Di will make things easy for you and just turn up at Ryu's family dojo, looking for something called the Phoenix Mirror. Lan Di! Ryu-san, don't do it! <sighs> That's as far as the good news goes, however, because Landi is a living weapon trained in deadly forbidden martial arts, and you are a part-time forklift truck driver who has a painstakingly curated collection of Sega capsule toys. I will avenge my father's death. I mean, I love the confidence, Rio. Is anyone interested in buying some capsule toys? One careful owner. Hey, thanks for watching this video about the weird ways the games made you hurry up. Oh, 
Okay, the music's going faster. The music's going faster. All right, quickly. Um, please watch another video. Uh, here is one from outside uh, Xbox. That's us. Down here is outside Extra. They also work with us. Watch one of these two videos. Um, what else? Uh, like, Supporters subscribe. Club. The the uh, the OX Supporters Club on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com/slash/OX Club. Oh God, it's getting faster. It's stressful. Please click something. Please, please.